Coach Marinelli, the rise of Central Ohio Division One wrestling. Okay, I mean Division Two. You guys are always super competitive. Um, when you were in high school, I believe you guys were the the, the not you, but Reedy was Division Two champs in Ohio. And that is that the only Columbus team to win a a state title in uh, in wrestling. No, well, DeSales has won DeSales quite a few. And the DeSales, yeah. but before you were on DeSales' team, when you were like a little kid. Um, DeSales and Reedy, I think. Maybe Licking Heights in there. Maybe Licking Heights in Division Three. Yeah, I don't right? know exactly, yeah. But, like, you know, we can name them on one hand, the teams that have won. If we talk Northeast Ohio, we don't have enough hands and toes mm -hmm. to see who won. And I'm starting to see the playing field really level, especially in Division I. Um, you know, Sean Andrews is doing a great job in Marysville. Okay, they've had a couple, multiple finalists, multiple champs. In the last wrestled at Kent State, too. Yeah, and, and he's just doing a fabulous yeah. job. You guys are coming on. You had your first state champ. Mm -hmm. the school's, how old is the school? Is it 10 years old yet? Yeah, yeah it's, just turned, it's uh, 12 years old. So Liberty's 12 years old. You already got a state champ. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's still schools out there who've been around for almost, you know, almost 100 years going on. Mm -hmm. Some of the public schools here in Ohio don't have state champs. So you look at that, that's pretty immediate success. Um, there's just other, you know, other the, the, the Hilliards, they're doing a nice job. Dominic DeSavio does a nice job. So, I mean, he's, he's had success. But, I, you know, I'm looking at as a whole. Why is Central Ohio coming on the way it's coming on? Is it you guys are getting better and Northeast Ohio staying the same? Or you, what, what, is, what is the growth factor here? Uh, I think that we're starting to get um, generational wrestling a little bit more. Like the dads wrestled and now... Now the son's going to wrestle. The other thing is that if, if you just look at our eight-team league that we're in, uh, everybody in that team has a guy that wrestled in, division, in college, Division One, two, II, or three level. So we have a lot of guys who've wrestled in college coming back and using that knowledge to, to build a good program. Our eight-team league had uh, six or seven guys in it. In the, in the state finals out of our eight team league so and I also think there's competition now um, and I'd like to think that's for a number of reasons but um, so that's kind of why I think we're catching up a little bit and I think the rest of the state's catching up too I just think it's starting to uh, level out a little bit and um, yeah. that we, we've got good schools here good districts people this area is growing too so there's more there's more kids coming into it so when you got more kids to draw from you got a bigger base you're probably going to be able to produce a little bit better but you're right cleveland no northeast ohio i shouldn't say just cleveland is, is still the hot spot and those are the teams that we aspire to to be as good as the eds the perry's the solons the mate uh, Elyria's, all those teams up there, and some more of the teams that you know we aspire to, to to be as good as. When you make this huge leap from the sales, where you went to school, mm -hmm. where you coached, you're runner up a couple times, should have won a state title in my opinion as a team, mm -hmm. doesn't happen, unfinished business there, and, and you leave, and you make this leap of faith from a private school where you went, you teach, you coach. And you come to this place that it's nothing. It is like literally dirt. Yeah. This is a field while you're winning, winning team titles, winning you know your state runner-up. This is a, a dirt field. There's nothing here. What's that leap of faith like for you to go from to mm. sales to Olin Angie, or Liberty Powell? Yeah, What's that like? It was really uh, at first. It was really, really tough for me because our first meeting we had two guys show up to our first first meeting. So I. I scoured the halls. I got everybody I could to get out for wrestling, and we end up having 30 or so kids on the team. And you know, I guess I had a fixed mindset at the sales because I could do stuff a certain certain way. And then I get here, and then some of the stuff didn't didn't work quite as well the same way. So I had to, I really had to do a lot more psychological studying and see how people's brains work a little bit a little bit better, and then spend more time motivating and. I guess I told our guys the first year I got the pom poms out, and I was a cheerleader coach. And uh, so eventually we got a little bit better and a little bit better. And four years later we we were competitive and won the district title. And that district title team that we won, there was not one kid on that team that was even a uh, middle school state qualifier. We had seven seven state qualifiers, and we had a first state placer in school history. And I just we just got to build a little bit, 
you know, but it's continual growth. And instead of having these ego-driven goals like you might have at a place that's already established, like we want to, this team wants to win a state title every year. St. Ed's, that's expected. You know, they've been there a lot. But at, at Liberty, I mean, what was expected and what is expected is just steps of, uh, of growth a little bit at a time. And, and we did more task-oriented goals to, to get our guys to, to, to grow. So as a teacher, as a coach, you, know, you, you gotta keep you got to keep trying to grow. And uh, if you don't, you'll stay stagnant. That's why I like watching college wrestling, and I really love Ohio State, but I still like watching how Kale Sanderson does things or how John Smith does things because that's how I learn and grow. And, and this has been a good good process. And we started small. We just kept added, 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 and now we've got some good teams that are competitive. And I think some of Central Ohio's seen some of the things that we do, and I think some of the coaches are starting to do some of the things that we do. And, and hopefully they get the same results. Okay. I know being you know, a guy who's won, you won how many district titles at the sales? I think 10. 10. Yeah, you won no, 10 district titles at the sales. How many times were you runner-up? Twice. Twice runner-up. I'm guessing you probably won 10 plus sectional titles as well. Yeah. Something like and you had almost, did you have double digit state champs? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so you had over 10 state champs. Um, a lot of your guys went on to Division One guys. Some of your guys, you got a couple of Division One All-Americans. Mm -hmm. So you, you had just really good guys, a really great program established. How tough is the pill to swallow going from we're going to challenge for a state title this year to I got two guys showing up to meetings mm -hmm. and I'm going to be the pom-pom coach. Were there some dark moments there? Yeah. You know what? One good thing about it is that when you're winning a lot, you don't have a lot of time to be in the hospitality room. <laughs> so when you're not winning as much, you get to be in the hospitality room. So those first couple of years, I, I got in the hospitality room and I figured out who has a good hospitality room and I and I like to eat. So I in that first year, I gained probably 10, 10 pounds and I got to know a lot of coaches and a lot of officials and and talk to people uh, on a level which I didn't wasn't able to do before. So at a certain point, I <laughs> silver lining. You're telling me right. Right, so I have, I have a, I grew from that, you know, because sometimes you're in wrestling, you don't see all the other things work around it, and then there's all these other things that, that go into a running a tournament or, uh, or building a program, and you know, at sells I was fortunate that we always had some really good athletes and, and talent, and, uh, and uh, here we've got that, but we don't have that tradition like they had over there. So those first two years, I, I, I got to know a lot of people, and I got to be in a lot of hospitality rooms, and I enjoyed myself, even though we weren't winning as much, and, that, and you know, I just, and I just enjoyed the atmosphere, and I learned a lot, and, but it, it wasn't really like a bitter pill, so to, to say that it's look, looking at an opportunity of uh, how can we get better, how can this team grow, what's the challenge? You know, and how do you take steps to, to improve those? And then how do you make it concrete so other people know what you're trying to do and so that you can build that culture uh, where wrestling's important?